Okay, so for this example, we're going to be looking at the impulse momentum principle, specifically for fluids and a flow that hits uh, maybe a plate, a wall, or whatever it may be. So for this example, we're told we have a vertical jet of water with a density of 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter is deflected perpendicular to the original jet stream by a plate as shown below. So this is our plate here. And we have the flow and this is our jet so let me denote that this is gonna be the jet and what we're asked to determine is the magnitude of force the force required to hold the plate in place is most nearly what so we know we need to determine this force right so we know there's gonna be a force acting here due to the jet and due to the flow so this force must be this force for every action there is going to be an equal and opposite reaction so this is the force we are trying to to find to hold the plate in place so what we're going to make use of is the impulse momentum principle and before we look at the equation let's just look at the velocity for the jet so we know the flow is going to have some velocity that goes up vertically I'll call this V and we know at the instant it hits the plate it's going to deflect at a perpendicular direction to the right and to the left and we can see that both of these counteract each other therefore they cancel each other out and they act perpendicular to the plate when you have this type of scenario these always act perpendicular the velocity here and the velocity here since they cancel each other out there we can denote that the velocity at this point is going to equal to zero so initially we have some velocity let's call it v1 due to the flow that comes that comes we hit the plate then our final velocity let's call it v2 is going to be zero so we have to denote that the final velocity is zero Therefore, when we consider the final momentum, we know our final momentum depends on the mass times velocity. If the velocity is zero, therefore the final momentum is going to be zero. So we can use the impulse momentum equation provided in our FE handbook. And it's going to be this section. And I think this is on page 186 in the new FE handbook 10.0. And we're told the resultant force in a given direction acting on the fluid equals the rate of change of momentum of the fluid. So we're going to have, we're going to be taking our final momentum minus our initial momentum. So this is the final as denoted by the subscript of 2. And minus our initial momentum which is going to be our flow rate times our density times our velocity. That's the equation for the rate of momentum of a fluid and in this case this would be the rate of momentum of the fluid entering the control volume we've denoted that by v sub 1 it's going to be the flow entering this is the rate of momentum of the fluid leaving the control volume and this is where our velocity is going to be zero so this whole term is going to become zero so if I use this equation we can go back we know that the force the total sum of the resultant force is going to be the sum of the Q it's going to be Q2 and Rho the density V2 minus the Q1, Rho1, and V1. And once again, we said that V2, the velocity leaving the control volume, or the momentum that leaves the control volume in this case, rate of momentum of the fluid leaving the control volume in the same direction of the force, is going to be zero because we know our velocity at the end is going to be zero at that point it's zero therefore you know this will be zero 
So this whole entire term becomes zero. So we're just going to be focusing on this term. And the negative acts for the direction of the force. It's going to be acting downward. So it's going to be negative. It's going to be counteracting the original force that goes upward due to the flow. So we know here that the total resultant force is going to be our Q1 times our rho 1 times our velocity 1 and the force we know Q is going to be AV right so I'll plug that in it's going to be AV times rho 1 times the velocity 1 and this is V1 we're still focusing on V1 V1 times V1 is going to be V1 squared so the force is going to be A times the rho 1 times V1 squared and the force the area in this case is gonna be given it's 0 0.010 meter squared and our rho is also given to be the 1000 for water kilogram per cubic meter and also we have the velocity this is squared because we have a velocity and a velocity it's going to be squared so that is 30 meter per second squared and if I do my math here let me just check the math times a thousand times 30 I got around 9,000 newtons which is going to be you divide that by a thousand so it gives us 9.0 kilonewtons so that's our answer and it should be b that's all hope that helps